when I think of these, for lifting up these silent sins, I can think, yeah, this is how they got the six hours. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. While we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. We don't have to be perfect before we come to him. God accepts us just as we are, completely sinful, and he's willing to give us grace. Let us gather here before our Lord, now commit ourselves to Christ as his servants in covenant. Let us give ourselves to him so that we may fully belong to him. Jesus Christ has left us with a lot of work to do. Some of this work is easy and some of it's hard. Some of this work lines up with the things that we want to do, lines up with the kind of people we are right now, and other things we got to change in order to do those things. Some of this work can please both Jesus and ourselves, but some of this other work we have no desire to do. That's the kind of things he wants us to do. We can't please Jesus sometimes except by denying ourselves, dying to ourselves for other people. Jesus, we offer you this prayer. Lord God, click. Please no, go, back. go back one. Lord God, please, please let, let me be your servant. servant. Let, let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I will give myself completely to your will. Lord, I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me as well as you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffer for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to you. Pleasure, pleasure, and pleasure. John Wesley wrote this prayer. In, it's in our hymnal. I think it's 638. That's 683. So if you want a copy, let me know, and I'll find it. It's in my wallet. If you want a copy, I'll give it to you. He said this prayer all the time, and it follows his words. Let me be your servant. And Jesus Christ is a savior to those who are his true servants. Jesus is the source of all salvation. To be his servant is, is to consent fully to his will. In Bible 101, we said Jesus is Lord except. Well, there's no exceptions. Jesus has to be Lord of everything we do. Jesus will be our everything or he will be nothing. It's up to us to decide what we want to do. Let us now confirm this truth in holy covenant with God. Let us in our life follow him in these six ways. And if we're willing to make our covenant with God a reality in 2020, let's commit to these things. To set aside time in our day to be spent alone with Jesus in prayer and devotion. Try it. If not first thing in the morning, then before you go to bed at night. Sign up for a devotional. Open up your Bible. Read it. We have to know what God's saying to us. We have to claim His covenant as our own. Not trusting in our own strength, but relying on His promise of giving grace and strength. We need to try to promise to attend Christian worship weekly. Right now, the way it is, people are consistent attenders if they come once a month. Let's try to do this once a week. No matter where you're at, try to attend worship once a week. Try to gather with other like-minded Christians. Use this time to revitalize yourself. Use this time to strengthen yourself and get ready for the world. Because that world, you're not going to get it out there. Promise to grow through diligent group or individual Bible study. We can't know what God's saying unless we read His words. Right? We can't understand him unless we pray to him and we can't hear him unless we read his word we promise to voluntarily give back to God everything he's given to us at least a portion 
God's blessed us with everything. He's blessed us financially. He's blessed us with talents. We need to promise to give Him a portion of that back. Volunteer for your church. And share with others the impact He's had on our lives. God has blessed all of us. We need to share that. That's all He asks. Tell other people. Today we have chosen to give our heart and life to God. I pray that today we have chosen to give our life and heart to God. We've opened our mouths to dedicate ourselves. We've said those prayers. Now we need to commit to those prayers, to make them ours. My righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me now as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness when I have not done your will. Your promise of mercy, I turn to you through Jesus my whole heart. I hear and now renounce every idol of my life, committed to you, that I will not commit any sin. We all are all heaven and earth. I hear and now acknowledge you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as my Lord and God. I vow to give all of myself, body and soul. In 2020, your leadership is going to look back at the plans we laid out in 2011. And we want to execute those plans. We want to make those things become fruitful. One of the things that we said we would do is we would reach out to those in Cambridge who don't know Jesus. We would reach out to the youth and try to make God important and real to Him. So if your leadership comes to you, please consider helping out. Also, we're going to help out, we're going to establish the Lunchbox program here in Cambridge. It's something they've done in Geneseo. It's going to offer a free lunch in the summer, Monday through Friday, to every child in Cambridge, 18 years and younger. So if a leadership or someone comes to you and says, can you help out? We need 12 people. Can you help us out? So I ask you to consider those things, and, and maybe even before you leave. Because here, here's something I ran across as I was doing my devotional this week. 
And it's, it's something that happened to, to Pastor D.L. Moody, you know, the guy who started Moody Bible Institute? So this is a big guy. So he was preaching one Sunday night in October 1871. And he said, as he finished, before he sent people out, he said, go home and consider this week what to do with Christ. Next week, come back and tell me what you decided to do. He actually let people leave and figure out what they're going to do for God that week. You know what happened that night? The Chicago Fire. Some of those people never woke up the next day. And Pastor Moody said at that point he would never ever do that again. He would never let people leave worship without deciding what they were going to do, without committing their lives. So I ask you, since the praise band's not here, we've got some extra time, I ask you to turn to the person next to you. Tell that person what God's put on your heart that you're going to do for him at his church this year. Stand up, turn to the person next to you, and say, this is what I intend to do.